This conference will now be recorded. Okay. That's our success message. That is not the one I want. That's the one I want. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Delighted to have you here. I'm going to have you here less than an hour. I'm going to fly through this. But this is an interactive workshop. Uh, if you are an ALO, you should have in front of you a form that says my ALO business plan. And I'm going to ask you to kind of fill this out as we go. Do we have another extra one? Uh, Mr. Kevin ALO needs one right there. Just go ahead and put your name, your date. And if you have identified a Jackson Henry loan officer as your partner, put their name down. If you don't, then you're going to meet some incredibly wonderful people today. Uh, whose name you can put in that blank, okay? So today, I'm not here to introduce the program because you all have heard about the program and signed up. And I will say that puts you in a very elite group because I've presented this to about 400 realtors. Well, more than that, if you just talk about the commercials I do in Legal Update 1 and Legal Update 2 classes, probably 600 people since we started this program in June and we've had about a dozen people actually complete it. All 600 say they want to do it, but it's those who take action, who take the course, who pass the test, um, who actually get to benefit. So you all are in a very elite group and uh, very proud of you. Very, very glad to be partnered with you. So in this session, we're going beyond just introducing the program. And I specifically want to talk with you about strategies for leveraging your LO license now to do exactly what you intended to do when you started the process, which is make a whole bunch of money using passive mechanisms. In other words, you already have a full-time job as a real estate agent. You don't need another job. You don't need to learn another industry. How can you just leverage this license with Jackson Henry to open the taps of this passive income. That's what we're going to talk about very specifically today. So three ways, three streams of passive income are opened because of your license. You can introduce your buyers, those who are funding part of the purchase to Jackson Henry Mortgage. You can introduce other agents to Jackson Henry Mortgage, and you can introduce other loan officers to Jackson Henry Mortgage. So when I refer to level one, level two, level three, these are the levels. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Your buyers, other agents, and other loan officers, okay? Each of them create a very consistent income opportunity. Um, and let me just break that down for you. In all three levels, we pay the same, 20 basis points. And that, that translates to $200 per $100,000 of loan value. Last year, our average loan size was $300,000. That meant that our average ALO payout was $600 per loan. This month already, in January, we have seen our average go up to $330,000. That's a 10% increase. Uh, in just the first month, which means that now your payout would be, somebody do the math, 660, $660. So it's even more valuable now. Now, we pay out on <laughs> eligible loans. What does eligible mean? First of all, it's legally permissible to compensate you. We can't compensate you on every loan where you are the agent on the transaction. And the exceptions right now are VA and USDA. You, well, you, Trevor, you missed it. Yep. You yeah, were at the doctor's office in December when rejoicing broke out across the land because FHA announced that they were no longer going to prohibit real estate agents from being on both sides of the transaction. Right. That's correct. And we are fully expecting VA and USDA to follow in the FHA's footsteps. So that has opened up huge income opportunity. So legally permissible, and right now that's really the only conflict is on VA and USDA loans. And then secondly, 
not discounted. So as a real estate agent, we tend to think in terms of 3%, right? And we don't always get 3%, do we? But we can calculate 3% of just about any number in our head. That's kind of our baseline. And every once in a while in a competitive situation or for a family, a friend or something, we'll go down to 2% or 1% or we'll waive it or whatever. On the mortgage side, it's very similar to that. Our baseline is not 3%, it's 2.75%. And that's also described as 275 basis points. And we price our loans on that basis. But we don't always get 3%. We don't always get 2.75%. And if your LO has to discount for whatever reason, then that becomes an ineligible loan. And I will tell you that probably 20% of our loans are discounted. So 80% of them remain eligible. They're a full 3% or a full 2.75% loan. Okay. Make sense? Any questions about that? 2.75 is on the loan amount, right? It is the loan amount. Right. Yep. Not the sale price, the no. property. Yes. Yes, it is the loan amount. So is there, is that program, if, if an agent has to discount back and forth, that just makes it ineligible? Just makes it ineligible. That's correct. Yes. Trina? Could you mind clarifying a no agent again? I'm sorry. I think I missed that. Legally permissible, no agent, LO contract. So, right? yeah, no, there's no, if you're both the agent and the LO. Oh, okay. Okay, that's the problem. That's why they're. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right now. It's just VA and just USDA. Everything else, there's no conflict. Conventional loans, non-QM, all that's fine. Okay. All right. So let's talk about level one. This is your borrowers. This is strategy, and this is where you already filled in your top portion of your business plan. Now you can start filling in uh, the first section, level one. Um, introduce your buyers to Jackson Henry Mortgage. Now, how do you do that effectively? Because don't most buyers come to you already having a prequal letter? No, thank you, we love your buyers. Um, many do because they have a banking relationship, no longer with Wells Fargo, but maybe Bank of America or someone like that or they've been listening to the radio or watching late night TV and they got a Quicken or something like that. They did something online. So there is an art to making a loan referral. And this is going to be a key factor in ramping up your revenue as a result of having your loan officer license. You can't simply have a borrower come to you and say, Oh, I already got somebody. I got somebody who financed our last home. A significant portion of your borrowers are going to have something already in place. That's not a problem. And we don't want you to ever be put off by that. In fact, we want you to, per, to encounter that situation with a great deal of positivity. And I'm going to give you the exact strategies around that. Okay. First of all, you want to presume that all your buyers will want to follow your recommendation. If you recommend an HVAC tech or a home inspector, do they typically take your recommendation, right? You want to presume that same level of confidence when you recommend a loan officer. Because when you represent, when you, when you recommend an HVAC tech, you're pretty strong about that, right? <laughs> Lots of good HVAC companies in town, but Jose, he's going to take care of you. He's not going to overcharge you. He's going to be honest. Many of my clients have used them and had great experiences. You want that same confidence to follow your LO recommendation. Speak with confidence. After all, all your buyers follow your recommendations. That's an internal belief. It may or not, may or not be factually true on the ground right now, but what happens in reality follows what's true in our hearts. That's what, that's the confidence that comes out of our mouth is what creates the reality. So you have to have that core belief. My buyers trust me. They chose me out of 45,000 other options in the Houston metro area. They trust me. They're going to do what I recommend. <clears throat> and then I would encourage you to shoot for an 80% referral rate to JHM. If you close 10 buyers this year, 
who are financing part of the transaction, aim for eight of them doing business with Jackson Henry Mortgage. Some of them you'll never get for whatever reason. Maybe their brother-in-law is a loan officer or whatever it is. They're just stuck on something. It, it happens. But 80% is a high number, but it's a doable number. It's the number that I had when I was a producing real estate agent. And my, my loan officer at that time will tell you that I was the number one referring real estate agent in all of Houston to SWBC Mortgage. No agent sent them more business than I did. And my preferred lender, Chris Planto, actually said to me, Frank, you need to teach a class on how to make a referral. <clears throat> Little did he know he was a prophet because <laughs> here I am teaching a class on how to make a referral to a loan officer. All right, here it is. In your initial buyer consultation, when you're first talking to them, when you're getting to know each other, you're asking what type of home they want to purchase, what kind of price range, what features that they're looking for. At some point, you're going to ask this question. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Will you be paying cash or financing part of the transaction? Do you ask that question? No. Yeah. That's, that's a nice way to ask it. You don't presume they can't pay cash. They might have the money, mm -hmm. right? So you ask, will you be paying cash or financing a portion of the transaction? If financing is involved, ask the question because you want to know what you're dealing with. You've got to figure out what's on the ground right now. Excellent. Have you been in touch with a lender yet? That's a great way to ask the question. You don't have to ask, are you pre-qualified or are you pre-approved? Have you been in touch with a lender? <clears throat> now, if they say yes, we got a pre-qual, we got a brother-in-law, we listen to late night radio, whatever it is, here's your response. Yes, we've been in touch with a lender. You say, excellent. In a transaction this large, I always recommend that my clients get a second opinion. I have a local lender because almost always their prequal is from somebody in California or Michigan or New Jersey, right? I have a local lender who is awesome. She consistently has the lowest rates and fees. That is a key, key phrase right there. What do buyers want to do? Pay as little as possible, right? Because they're coming out of pocket now $450,000 for a home they thought they were going to have to pay three fifty dollars for, right? Everything is more costly. She consistently has the lowest rates and fees. And my clients love her. Would it be okay if I sent a group text introducing the two of you to each other? Note, we're not saying... Can I give you her business card and you can give her a call? What will not happen? The call. The call. The call. <laughs> it won't happen. Yeah, if you if you know they're available and you've prepped them. The group text is pretty cool because now they each have each other's contact info. So if you do make the call and you're talking, I would still follow up with a group text uh, so that they can, can reach each other. So you, you, again, you don't want to offload the burden of contact to the borrower. As well as intentioned as they are, they're not gonna do it, okay? So you take the initiative. Now, if they say no, no, I've not been in touch with a lender, you have a very similar response. Excellent. I have a local lender who is awesome. She consistently has the lowest rates and fees, and my clients love her. Sound familiar? Would it be okay if I sent a group text introducing you to each other? Great. The only difference in your response is, if they already have been in touch with a lender, I always recommend to my clients in this situation that you get a second opinion. So you're not really memorizing two different things. It's always the same. Excellent. I have a local lender who always has the lowest rates and fees, and she is awesome. My clients love her. Would it be okay if I sent a group text introducing you to each other? That's simple. Well, I guess the class is over. <laughs> I mean, that's how you do it. Yeah. It is really that simple, but you have to be strong. You have to believe. You have to be in a position of strength with your borrowers and speak with conviction 
so that they will follow your lead on that. Okay, so let's fill out our business plan. Can I ask a question? Yes, Trina. What about the disclosure of, of um, Jessica's business plan? Because that's the one that I was looking at. Yes, yeah. the ABR. So we have an ABR which we'll send out to each of you, written specifically for our ALO program. And my recommendation is you include it in all the other buyer docs that you send to your client. Yeah. I wouldn't make a big deal of it individually. If you're an EXP agent, you're already presenting what? An ABA. Did I say ABR a minute ago? Isn't the ABR supposed to be given at the time or before or at the time of referral? I'm not an attorney. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> but I I do know that. So you're, you're certainly is welcome to. Is that, is that a thing that flows to us too, as loan officers, that we have to make sure that's. Mm, so signed. no, it's it's the realtor, it's the ALO, because they're the realtor also. So my recommendation, and I'm not an attorney, is that you submit this with all your other buyer docs. Okay. Okay with your buyer representation agreement, with your IABS, any other ABA or ABR disclosure, all at one time. If you haven't done that up front, then when you're making an offer and you're sending over the contract, send them in. I would just, I would never draw attention to a document that may raise uncomfortable questions. You want to just do it in the context of everything else. Okay. And if they, and if you're, you know, one of those agents that you like to go over every paragraph and that's a wonderful type of agent to have, then you simply, here's a, all you simply say is, <laughs> there are many great mortgage companies in Houston. I have identified the one that my clients have the best experience with and I've entered into a working relationship with them. This document shows that I have a relationship with Jackson Henry Mortgage. You're welcome to use anybody you want to in the market. Lots of good ones. This is the one that I use and recommend and I'm connected with. That's all you have to say. That's it. Okay. So let me, let's have some numbers filled in here. How many borrowers can I successfully close with JHM this year? So think about how many buyer borrowers you're going to have and target 80% or a percentage of those that you think is appropriate or accurate and put a number in there. And by the way, this is not the law of the Medes and the Persians. It's not carved in stone. It's just a working document. Okay. So put a number in there. Secondly, my average revenue per loan. So if you're working with average buyers in this marketplace, you can probably plan around $660. If you're working with a higher clientele, ramp that up accordingly, $200 per hundred thousand of loan value or lower level of buyers, do that, but get your number and then multiply one by the other. This is where you might need your phone. The calculator function, my anticipated total revenue this year. So just multiply your number of anticipated closings with JHM by the average revenue per loan. That's going to give you a number. Melly, you don't need a calculator. For that. You're good. I was just, I was just thinking of. She's over here adding zeros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zero plus zero plus zero. Okay. No, not that zero. Now go ahead. We're just to get the juices flowing. Go ahead and write down the names of of three borrowers, or potential borrowers or buyers. They may not be under contract with you right now. It may be somebody that you know is going to start looking in February or they're going to put their home on the market in March, but you probably know already a few of your prospective buyers that are online or going to become on, online in the next few months. Just write their names down. Oh, the Smiths, you know, the Hernandezes, whatever it is, just put their names there. Get the juices flowing. Okay. Now, well, I'll pause about 30 seconds and let you get those names down.
Well, I can attest that I'm, I'm part of the LO, LO referral program. These 20 bits, they do add up. I'm going to have you give a testimony when I get to level three. <laughs> Same time, Trina. Yes, Cam? You said that you noticed a 10% increase from 300 to 330. Yes. Do you think that's a trend? Yes, I do. And do you think that that will go up by a quarter this year? Or when will we be a year from today, please? So, well, those of you on the coaching call this morning know that I did dust off my crystal ball, which I don't do very often. Okay. And my prediction is we have hit the low point for real estate prices. This is it. We probably hit it honestly about three weeks ago. And I think activity is up again. Uh, people have accommodated themselves to the rates. They know about buy downs right now. They know that prices have moderated somewhat. They probably also know instinctively what I think we can back up numerically as soon as we have the data, which is that there's a lot of activity in the market and prices are not going down any further. In Texas, we are in a demand market. And that means there's a, a, a distinct housing shortage. People are, have not stopped moving here. And that's going to continue for the next foreseeable future, the next five, 10 years at least. So I would say if you have buyers, you need to get them out there right now. They should not be waiting for lower prices or lower interest rates. Even if rates moderate further this year, where there's no guarantee that they will, even if, even if they drop to a percentage point, say they went all the way down to five and a half, okay, I think prices are going to creep up yeah. through the year. Another uh, thing I've been using to kind of push people along is also this debt ceiling fight. The longer that this goes on, I'm, I'm encouraging people to get out there now because if Republicans go to the mat on this one, it is going to screw up a lot of things badly. So that's coming to June. So I'm going to go and deep again. So by now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would. If I had buyers, if I was an active real estate agent, I'd be saying this is the time. Say that again. The debt. There's a debt, debt ceiling. That's going on right now. The, the, the Republicans are real serious about <clears throat> taking this one on the mat, like they did a few years ago. And if they do, it's going to really jack with interest rates and financial markets and everything. So. That's Instagram readable right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one more suggestion before we move away from level one. If you have identified an LO partner at Jackson Henry, put their application link in your email signature. Now this is mine because that was real easy for me to copy. And you'll see mine is very plain Jane, kind of the Microsoft in an Apple world. And it just says, apply for a home loan here. But if you like bells and whistles and, you know, dancing deer and all that kind of stuff, Joy Lewis can do that, our marketing director. She can put your photo in here, put your loan officer's picture, whatever you want. Um, you just let your loan officer know. And Joy is, she knows that we have fallen told her and she is ready to do this. Um, but put that there. That makes it super easy as well. You do the three-way text to make a connection. And then you can say to your buyer borrower, the application link is already in your inbox because you've likely been communicating with them already by email. Pull up my last email message to you and the application link is right in the signature. See how easy that is? Well, that link, the question that I'm going to get, I yes. know I'm going to get is, will, they, will it ding their credit? Oh, great. Great question. So, well, it's a yes and a no. If we do a hard pull, which is we're going forward with this application, Yes, there's a ding on their credit. But let's say that they had already done a prequal with you know, Quicken or someone like that. The federal government wants borrowers to shop. And so they do not allow the credit reporting agencies to ding their credit more than once in a 45 day period when applying for a mortgage loan. So is this a hard pull or a soft the, pull? So it's, it's neither. Yeah, this is the application. Okay. So the LO is going to review the application. If they know this borrower, they're an Exxon engineer, they've already bought three properties from the LO, we're going right to a hard pull. We know they're good. 
if there's anything questionable in the application or we don't know them very well, we're going to do a soft pull. It costs us a lot less money. It gives us the exact same information and it does not hit their credit. Okay, so we can tell them, fill that out, it won't hit your credit. <coughs> well, we'll talk to the LO, oh, yes. The LO. Okay. the LO is going to make a judgment call because we have to pay for a soft pull and we have to pay for a hard pull. Okay. We don't want to pay for both if we don't have to. If we're not sure, we're going to start with soft. Mm -hmm. if, like if you're going to talk to someone that's three, four, five months out, no, we're not going to do a hard pull. So mm -hmm. Why would we do that? That's we're correct. Do this for soft. If, we're, if it's a guy that's really run and go, then yeah, we're going to have to do a hard pull. But at least we can't really run our underwriting tools without a hard pull. We, yeah. have, to, we have to have a hard pull to run, really underwrite a loan. We can get the data from a soft, but we can't officially say, yeah, you're good to go. Okay. Now, I'm also going to encourage you, Trina, compliance chief, <laughs> go ahead and put your NMLS number and Jackson Henry NMLS in your signature also. Okay. Because if you're encouraging people to apply for a home loan with the company that you're affiliated with, that is a marketing activity and you need to disclose this. Okay. So just write in your signature, just put it in there down at the bottom as part of what you put in your signature. You probably have a whole bunch of stuff in there already. Just add this to the bottom as you see that I have. Make sense? Should you put the name there? Just for clarity or no? Whose name? Like if you're referring, you may be referring apply for loan here. Is that application attached to like a, a Shannon? Specific, it is. Like, okay. So Shannon and Trevor, all of our LOs have specific application links. And the, you find it, you go to jacksonhenry.com slash Shannon slash Trevor slash Brittany, and that's going to take you directly to their page and the application link. And the other you thing is, at least, at least for now, you could. on our current system, I don't know what we're doing, but we can generate a link that's specific to you yes. from us. So whenever yes. your borrower comes through, we'll know it's you. Okay. Yeah, that's that would be the way to go. Talk to your LO, and then and that'd be a great way. Apply for a home loan, you know, with Shannon, with Trevor, with Lana, with Jackson Henry Mortgage. You can just spare the whole thing out if you want to. Because then another thing too, if you customize it with that agent, it'll also notify you when they fill out the application. Yes. So you don't have to wonder like, hey, did they, did they fill it out? Call us. You know it's there. We're working on it. And Perfect. Cool. Reminded me of something I'd forgotten. So thank you very much. All right. We're ready to move on from level one. Everybody got their business plan filled out? Okay. Level two. Introduce other agents to Jackson Henry Mortgage. There are many ways that you can do that. You could simply send a three-way text. You know, hey, Julie, great seeing you at the Realtor Expo last week. Forgot to mention to you, I have found a great loan officer. I've copied her on this text message. When you have a moment, reach out to Lana. I think you're going to be very glad to hear what she's got to say. Take care, Cam. Okay. It, it can be that simple. It can be a one-on-one. -on -one, three-way text, connecting your loan officer to a fellow agent. Or it could happen at the end of a training class. We go to training classes all the time, CE classes. You're meeting new people all the time. And uh, just in the course of conversation, you could say, hey, if, if you've got a great loan officer you're working with, most real estate agents are going to say yes, right? Because they've got two or three or four. You know what? I used to have three or four as well but I found this great loan officer at Jackson Henry. Would it be okay if I just did a three-way text and introduced you to Trevor? I would encourage you just to have a cup of coffee with him. I mean, you might be amazed by what he's got to say. They have some programs that actually help us as real estate agents make more money without doing anything more than we're doing right now. Just something real simple. You could do that one-on-one. -on -one. It could happen at a coffee or lunch meeting. This is with people that you know better, the, the real estate agents that you hang out with. You can make a strong recommendation to them and then also follow the three-way text is so powerful because it informs the loan officer and starts the relationship right there, connects them together. And then finally, you can introduce us uh, to groups of agents at planned events that you are hosting. It can be an intentional introduction meeting and I'm still waiting to have our first. I've been talking about this since, June, nobody's done it yet, but I want to do it. I want you to be the first. Bob? All right. Ready? Melly? Right? I'm about to show you. 
Here we go. Event options. Reserve a conference room at Hebrews Coffee in Magnolia, right? Because you can't do it here yet. <laughs> Be here April or May, okay? Reserve a conference room and invite eight or ten of your realtor friends. And say, hey, there's this cool new coffee shop. I reserved a conference room. I've invited eight to ten of my friends because I want to hang out. I want to talk about the market. I want to see what's going on in your business. And I want to introduce you to this amazing loan officer I'm working with at Jackson Henry Mortgage. Are you available this Thursday at 10? Let's have coffee, get caught up, and let me introduce you to my new friend. It can be that simple, right? Doesn't have to be complicated. Reserve a private dining room at a local restaurant. Many of them have them. I've done private meetings. Sitar has one over here. Landry's has one. The new Federal American Grill has one. Spring Creek Barbecue has one. IHOP has one. Terrible service. Don't do it. But, <laughs> but there's lots of them. You could invite 15 or 20. They may not show up just to meet your loan officer. So think about building an agenda that would be very helpful to them. Maybe just a mastermind. Hey, I'm pulling together a mastermind, 15 to 20 agents from uh, many different companies who work in this market so we can share ideas about what's working, what's not. And oh, by the way, uh, my mortgage company is sponsoring lunch. That's what you can say. My mortgage company is sponsoring lunch. And then you introduce them. They get a chance to introduce themselves. It's a formal way of doing it in groups. You could have a party at your home. I thought of this, by the way, of level two in a dream. Have y'all, have y'all heard this story? I literally, I, I had level one figured out in my brain, but after I'd figured out level one, I literally had a dream one night and I've told this in the front of the Witherspoon, so I'm not speaking out of school, but in the dream I was on, I've never been to the Witherspoon's home. They're two of our, our Abby team at EXP agents, but we were on their dock on Lake Conroe and there were about 15 or 20 agents there. And Corey and Lori spoke up and said, we've invited all of you here tonight because you're our friends. We love hanging out with you. But we also wanted to introduce you to our Jackson Henry loan officer. You know, if I had a great HVAC tech, I'd be recommending them to you. When I need a great plumber, I ask you for a recommendation. Well, I have found a great loan officer and I'm here to recommend him to you tonight. This was the dream I had. And I popped up out of bed, I ran to my computer, and I wrote level two, <laughs> okay? By the way, I thought all of this was original with me. And after we started marketing it, I heard there are other mortgage companies who have done level one. You get your LO license, they'll pay you some bits when you send a loan. But apparently nobody else had the dream. Because I don't know of anybody else doing level two. Um, this is the way, once it happens, you, you have these events, you make a connection. We're going to register all these agents to you, 15, 10, 15, 20 agents. We're going to put them next to your name. And when they start sending loans to Jackson Henry, we're going to pay you just as if they were your borrowers, the same 20 bips. So, so whatever you put as your anticipated revenue on level one, you can multiply that by 10 on level two just by introducing us to 10 agents who start to use us as their preferred lender. Isn't, isn't that amazing? So from a logistics standpoint, how are we tracking all that in the back end of learning guys? That's my question. Right. So easy. It's a spreadsheet. It's the same way we track level ones right now. If you're an ALO with us and you've identified a loan officer that you're working with, we have that on a spreadsheet. But Trevor, believe it or not. So when we fill out the, the back end of lending of lending pad where we put in the agent name, that's how you're gonna create this list is who the agent who the agent name. We we know. We know on our end. We know in the back office. Joy knows, I know, Rebecca know. It's not so much the loan officer. It's the, when the ALO hosts an event and they give us the roster, these are the 10 agents who came, then we put it on our spreadsheet and we know so that when that um, 
real estate agent has a deal that comes our way, we pay them. Does that make sense? We pay the ALO who, who made the introduction. So do y'all have to like compare how, how, it to a spreadsheet? Like when the loan yeah. comes through, you compare it to a spreadsheet? Okay, let me, let me, just a little reality check. The software and the software is imposed in it's, names. It's not complicated. It is, it is a spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet. We can do a name search on the spreadsheet. It could have 40,000 names on it. We do a name search. It's going to identify that person and tell us who they're connected to. But Trevor, here's the yeah, point. Here's the point. I've been promoting this since June. Nobody has done it. So this is not a complicated. <laughs> but when it happens, <laughs> because it okay, could so go. Okay, we have Michael here. Yes. He had an agent refer someone to me. Michael Hughes got paid on that. And the funny thing is I knew that they were aligned because this agent told me, hey, Michael told me to use you. And I was like, cool. Oh, no, actually, yeah, it was a, I had a refi and purchase. So both of them, when they contacted me, said, hey, Michael Hughes told yes. me to call you. So I said, cool. And then so Michael didn't really know. And I didn't reach out and go like, hey, I have your borrower. This is this because we're working on it. Right? Yes. So at the end of the day, I was like, hey, guess what? You have da -da 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 coming your way. Yes. That's it. So, we will know. so that was, we were never told. Okay. That's why I'm saying the first one of you that makes this connection or hosts an event, let us be there, right? You're going to be there. You're going to be there. Get the roster. We're going to put it in a spreadsheet and I can just assure you, I'm not the technocrat here. We can appropriately compensate the right person. Okay. This is this is not PhD chemical engineering stuff. Yeah, but you just have to run the name yes. through every single like are you gonna run every single it's, agent's name through the spreadsheet? If necessary. Is that what you're gonna do? It's okay. kind of it's it because kind of like a checks and balances and payroll, right? Before you send out a check to someone, you're going to make sure you're paying the appropriate. People. Yes, thank you, Brittany. So it's just the checks and balances. That so are we don't have a spreadsheet to check right now. Nobody's done this yet. Well, I've referred like what three or four agents to you. Yes. On the text, so they should be on the spreadsheet, right? So have you ever given that name to us? To you directly. Remember, I've texted you like three or four names. Yeah. Hey, I've done the three-way introduction. Yes. So shouldn't you give, they be give, on? Give me a name. Uh, I'd have to go back to my text message. Okay. So there's no list right now. Okay. So yes, those names need to be on that list. So if we can recreate this. I think Beverly Birdsong was one. Okay. I'll go back through my text. Yeah. So I have no. I because were, I've been sending them all to you. Okay. I have the worst memory in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's recreate this. Okay. Let's identify these people. We'll start the spreadsheet that they're registered to you. Okay. I'm just going to go out there and say, I think that really the best way for you to make sure that you really get tracked is these links that are specifically to you or your, or your loan officer that whoever your realtor is, you bring to send them, make sure that I'm trying to get those links. Those connected. agents use that link. Use those, yeah. Cause that's going to be the way the, the really the, Rocks all the way to make sure that we can have you. Yeah. I'm going to well, step into the restroom and take my sweater off. I'll be right back. Yeah. And, uh, like a magic show. Entertain them, Kevin. It goes behind its stage. Look at this. Because I probably tried, something we can add to lending credit. My agents, you know, they get a flat rate, but if they take a Zillow call, then, you know, they have to pay a percent of a Zillow call to the brokerage. And the way I keep track of that is you would have to run every single buyer's name through the database well, and to see if it's still or not. Excel has a, you could do a, 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 a V-Link lookup. You could just do a search. You don't have yeah, to. but you have to check every single name. There's nothing automatic to where, Correct. you know, you have to check every single name. Yeah, yes. Or you could just attach every agent to that, to one, that one person so they can toggle like down to that, to that loan officer. Is there, there, is, is there, the yes, that's what we it create is. a field. Yeah. Somewhere in lending pad that we can automatically put in. We can. Name. So yeah. we, that way we can. We can. Yeah, it's on, easy. We can create fields. So let's not get bogged down right here. 
Instead, let's start making the referrals. We'll get you Mindy. We'll get yours registered and caught up. You'll have the first three. Yay. Okay. So thank you for getting the ball rolling. Let's turn three into 300. Okay. Because this, this is the first in exponential component of the ALO program. Now it's not just you and your individual borrowers. Imagine if you introduce us to 10 this year, 10 other agents, and next year 10, and the year after that 10. I mean, this snowball, as it rolls downhill, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is the first aspect of that, okay? Building your own mortgage revenue share group, all right? Oh, we gotta fill out our business plan. Let's do it. Level two, how many realtors can I introduce to JHM this year? And I would suggest that you think big. <laughs> can I do that? Is that legal? Think big. You know, you, you know a lot of realtors. Think big. How many could you introduce us to? Then put the same number in from level one, your average. Oh, how many loans will each of them send to JHM? That's where you might want to be conservative because you don't control that as much as you do the introduction. So let's just say I'm going to introduce 20 agents. I'm personally going to send 10 loans to JHM this year. Let's presume that maybe only they send three apiece or four apiece, okay? But now I'm still up to 40, 50, 60 loans that I'm going to get paid on from my rev share group. That's a whole lot more than my level one personal borrowers, okay? My average revenue per loan, that'll be the same from level one. And now you're going to multiply average revenue per loan times the number of loans that they send to JHM this year. That's going to go in the total line there. My anticipated total revenue this year. And that number should be a whole lot bigger than your level one number. This is the start of your exponential passive income. You like that, Melly? I'll guarantee you, you tell 10 agents, you could even say, meet me at the IHOP. Those agents are going to show up. I honestly tell every agent I meet about Shannon. My yes. The problem is I don't know how to track them. I'm just like, yeah. your part. I just gave you the answer. Yeah, I know, but this is like three a way, I'm not gonna be like Three-way text. Three-way text. Three text. That's it. Three-way text. It's so I'm easy. <laughs> Done. Okay, now let's just put three names. Who do I know? What other realtors that I can introduce to Jackson Henry Mortgage? We all know 30 realtors. Just put three names down to get the juices flowing. Three realtors who've not sent a deal to Jackson Henry, who don't have an established relationship with our company. And that's what we're that's the question we're going to ask. Have they sent us a loan before? If they haven't, we will register them to you. Don't send us the HAR roster. Okay. <laughs> These have to be people that you've personally connected with, you've made a one-on-one -on -one recommendation, or you've had a group meeting where your Jackson Henry LO has attended to introduce themselves. We're talking about formal introductions and strong recommendations, okay? All right, everybody got level two? Looks like I still see a lot of writing. I like that. Who's got a good joke? Shannon. I have nothing. <laughs> I don't have any good jokes. Who's got a good dad joke? You know, this cake. Yeah, King I was, Cake? I was with Cam when he got that cake. Yes. We were in downtown New Orleans. Oh. It was late, and we actually had been overserved. It wasn't pretty. And Cam <laughs> was down, and I called 911, and I said, Cam's down. And they said, well, where are you? And I said, I looked at the street sign and I said, I'm on Chapultulas Street. And they said, spell that for me. And I said, oh, damn. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to drag him over to Canal. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Bob wouldn't listen or he'd be laughing too. <laughs> the rest of us are laughing. Chapultulas. All right, let's go level three. Level three. Level three. <laughs> he looks kind of. 
Okay, I literally Googled loan officer, selected images. Oh, you think she, you think Shannon ought to be up here? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the prizes of We have a we have. 28 outstanding loan officers. They're, they're all my favorites. I don't want to be biased. I love all my children equally. So, um, so that's generic loan officer. So this is the other loan officer out there that you're going to introduce to us. Okay. And I want you to think about it from this perspective. Think about loan officers you're currently working with. Most realtors have got three or four favorites. But you know, eight or nine or 10 or 12, if you've been in the business very long, because they're calling on you and you're bumping into them at events and uh, all that kind of stuff. Those you've worked with in the past, you know, maybe they stopped calling on you. Maybe they screwed up a deal. Maybe they made somebody mad and you moved on, right? We have very short fuses in this business. You get one chance and we're moving on. Well, they might still be a good loan officer. Okay. Stuff happens. We'd like to talk to them. And then those who randomly market to you. Do you ever get solicited by loan officers? What a great opportunity. Hey, Susie, thanks for reaching out to me. That's very special. I actually have a committed relationship with a mortgage company right now. However, I would love to introduce you to them. They have some incredible value propositions for loan officers that have enabled them to double in size in the last six months. When most mortgage companies are losing people, firing people, laying off people, they've doubled in size. Who knows what's going to happen in the next year? Would you let me schedule an appointment? We'll let the broker over there buy his coffee or buy us lunch. And let's meet. I would like to meet you and let you meet the broker at Jackson Henry. Would that be okay? Could, by the way, could you ever do that? Could you ever say that? Could those words come out of your mouth comfortably? Yes. So would they be talking to you? Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy with the passion. For this, okay? <laughs> right? Yes. So yeah, they'll talk to me. So, um, so just think about these three categories. And this is the big, big opportunity. Trevor, testimony. Now, Trevor's not an ALO, he's an LO, senior LO. But when we started this program in June, he was the very first person to take advantage of it because as an LO, they can participate in level three just like the ALOs can. If an LO brings us another LO, we're gonna pay that LO 20 basis points on everything the LO closes that they bring to us. So tell us about your experience, Trevor. Yeah, I um, brought over one of my Long time associates in business, Brandon. Some of you have met and talked to you, but he's a highly productive loan officer. And, you know, his, um, since, since being part of that program, I mean, it's, it's generated consistent revenue on a monthly basis, which has really helped me to the tune of two, three thousand dollars a month. So it, it definitely works. And uh, if you can find highly productive loan officers, it's, that's a real good, real good source. So Trevor only did it once. He's getting two to three grand a month. What if you did it six times? Right? What if you did it six times this year and six times next year? Six times the year after that? Now we're talking about legacy money. You're not only going to change your life, you're going to change the lives of your kids and your grandkids. Okay? Trina, tell us your story. So I did this as well when Frank started his program and he told us about it. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. So I actually didn't have my LO license, but I do know a great loan officer that I personally never even worked with as a client. Right. He rep well, I did have a buyer, and she had her own lender um, with Cherry Creek Mortgage, Jason Hyman. I think that's that. Yes. He, um, she ended up switching halfway through the contract to uh, my Diaz. And so he had little, just a very little amount of time, and he delivered. He was awesome. He was on top of everything. He took great care of her. He really impressed me. Even though he wasn't my referral, I had never met him before. I thought he was great. Yeah. And then from there on out, um, he always touched face with me, and I just thought very highly of him. So 
when Frank introduced the program, I called, I just called Mike and said, I think you're a great loan officer and I want to put a bug in your ear that there's this great program out here that my broker is offering and I'd love to introduce you. And they met at lunch. We three we, met at lunch. We all met at lunch. Mm -hmm. The three of us met at, for, at, uh, at a safe house, really nice. Longhorn, right here. Longhorn, right there. And I, when I introduced Mike to Frank, I knew he was a bright loan officer. Mm -hmm. I was not fully aware of his production or anything. I just knew he was good. I liked him. And Mike decided to join Jackson Harry Morgan. Imagine that. Yeah. So Trina just got her license officially. Late December. Yes, late December. Barely in the system. So, how many loans will Mike close this month? Six. Six. Yeah. Do the math. Her first month, she's going to make between three and four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. First month. Mm -hmm. And Mike, you may not be aware of this, has not even finished his first year in the mortgage business. Wow. Yes. March is his rookie anniversary. Wow. So, what's he going to be doing a year from now? Yeah. Trina, don't don't leave the real estate business. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have a question. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Give uh, your uh, points. <laughs> <one. laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if you remember or not, but I've sent a couple of loan officers your way, but I yes. have a hard time explaining why they need to call you. Yes. So here, let me let me go through that now. Here's what the introduction to a loan officer sounds like. Hey Kim, I've recently begun working with Jackson Henry Mortgage because they have awesome programs for borrowers and real estate agents, but they're growing really fast because they also have great programs for loan officers. I think you should check them out. Would it be okay if I scheduled a time for us to meet or have lunch with their broker, Frank Gray? Now the big language, don't try to try explain, to explain anything. Just set the appointment. That's where I'm messing up. Because I'm like, I'm trying to tell them why, hey, why you should meet with Frank or why you should meet. Don't. It's because. The, the reason they should meet is because you recommend it, right? You have the relationship or you have the connection or they reached out to you even cold calling. But, but that's the reason they'll meet with me is your enthusiastic endorsement. And they've, they might say, what's it all about? And you're like, you know what? I don't even think I can explain it, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's incredible. I think you should hear about it. That's all, that's all we want you to do. And they're going to want to meet with you because they want a relationship. That's right. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yes. And, and, your, and your current yeah. loan officer relationships, they want to retain your business. Well, the way to retain your business is for them to be at Jackson Henry. Okay. Now you're not going to say all that to them. You're just going to say, you know what? I have recently formed a relationship with Jackson Henry mortgage because they're incredible programs for my borrowers and for real estate agents. It's incredible. I've never even heard of it before, but they also have great programs for loan officers. Jim, I, you know what? W could we go to lunch? I'd love to introduce you to their broker, Frank, and he can explain everything they're doing. Would that be okay? Could we have lunch together? So the random loan officer, because you get these calls a lot, yes. says, hey, let's do, let's do coffee. Yes. How can I transition that? Yeah, let's do it. And I have this person I want you to meet too. Say yes. Yeah, say yes. This is exactly what they want to have. They want to meet for coffee. Right. Fantastic. One of my core beliefs is I open the door to new relationships every day. I would love to meet you. So do we tell them we're going to invite But would it be okay no. if I brought my current mortgage broker? I would love for you guys to meet. <laughs> do you think they would do that? They're going to yes. Say, oh, they're going to say yes. Yes, they oh, will. Yes, Try it. Right. Your potential client. And their purpose okay. for making the call to you is to set an appointment. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So yes, just tell them, I would love to bring my current mortgage broker. Y'all might even know each other. I would love to hear what you're doing. I'm, I'd love for my current broker to hear what you're doing and all about your programs. So yeah, they'll, they'll say yes. Okay. Make sense. Now here's why this is the third stream is by far the most powerful because a good produ producing loan officer is going to close three, four, five loans a month. 
That's not a mega producer. That's a good, solid producer. Okay. Mike Diaz, closing six this month. Okay. I didn't say 50 or 60 a month. Three, four, five a month is a good deal. Okay. Well, at three, you're making close to two grand. You know, at five, now I've got myself in trouble. Um, three grand, right? That's, that's real money. And that's just one. Yeah. Two to three a month is what Trevor said. Two to three a month, two or 3000 a month. So just think if you just do this every couple of months, introduce us to five or six a year. I will tell you this, most loan officers, and I'm not saying it's 90% or 80%, but I'll say it's better than 50%. More than half of the experienced loan officers that I interview join us. So there's a really good chance if you introduce us to a good loan officer, they will see the value and come our way. Okay. So it's definitely worth it. So let's, let's go ahead and fill out level three on your business plan. How many LOs can I introduce to JHM this year? And what I mean by that is how many can I introduce who will actually join? So if you're going to make six introductions, just figure three or four. Okay. Somewhere, somewhere north of 50%. How many loans do they close each month? Well, if you don't know, just if they're a good productive person, they've been in the business a while, put in three, four, or five. That's a, that's a reasonable number for an experienced, productive LO. My average revenue per loan, this is actually going to be their average, but it's probably the same as your average. And then total anticipated revenue. You're going to multiply your average revenue per loan by the total number of loans. So if you introduce us to three, each closing three a month, that's nine. That's nine times 12 is 96. Is that right? Hmm? Correct. So 96 times 660. We're talking about real money now, aren't we? That's close to 80 grand. I'm doing that in my head. That's 80 grand from three introductions of three people closing three a month. Okay. Real money. So do that math. I know that's a little bit more complicated. Get your total. And by the way, go ahead and add up all three total columns, level one total, level two total, level three total. See what that number comes to. And now you need your calculator. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a full-time recruiter. <laughs> and now think about it. Just go ahead and put down three three names there. You know a lot more loan officers than that, but put down three names. Again, we're getting the juices flowing. LOs, you could be doing this too in your head because I know you don't have a written business plan. Think of three LOs, Brittany, mm -hmm. that you know <laughs> that you could introduce us to. Okay. We're not going to answer their calls. Now, now when you see it's CMG calling, answer the phone, you know, it's Cherry Creek, answer the phone. Yes. So add up, add up all three, put your three names, add up all three uh, totals there. Total potential revenue this year. Is that a scary number, by the way? Is it more than you made in real estate last year? That's why we're having this conversation. So here's a question. Loan officers also get calls from people who don't have realtors. Will they be referring to the real, their realtor partner? So think about this for just a moment. A typical loan officer working with realtors probably has 20 or 30 realtor partners. So they can't give every lead to every one. They're right. going to they're gonna have some distribution model. But what we teach and coach our LOs to do is to generate a transaction out of every transaction. And that goes back to the referring agent. And it looks like this. Tuesday is just ask Tuesday in our world. On Tuesdays, we call everybody associated with the transaction, the borrower, the co-borrower, the buyer's agent, the listing agent, the escrow officer, the insurance agent, and we provide them with an update. Now, if there was a critical need, 
to talk to them on Sunday or Saturday, we're doing that. But Tuesday, every week, we coach our LOs, call every person in the transaction. And the first conversation that you have with them, you're going to tell them, I'm going to call you every Tuesday. And every time I call you, I'm going to ask you the same question at the end of the conversation. So just brace yourself. With six weeks to closing, you're going to hear this from me six times in the next six weeks, okay? And it goes like this. After I provide you an update, I'm going to ask you, do you know anybody else right now who's thinking about buying, selling, or refinancing? If you do, if you don't right now, if you come across anybody, can I count on you to let me know right away? Okay. So I'm going to ask you that question every time. So just brace yourself. It's coming. And keep your spidey senses up because you know the question's coming. Out of the six weeks that I ask you that question and that I ask the other six parties to the transaction over that time, 36 times I've asked that question, I anticipate I'm going to generate at least one real estate lead. And when I get it, it's going right back to you. So it's the, it's the realtors who are sending us the deals who are in the position to get the real estate referral. Gotcha. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Just two more bits of math and we're going to, We'll wrap this up. Look at your number for today, this year, total potential revenue. What if you did that three years in a row? Multiply it by three. Can I be invited by anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> what if you did it five years in a row? Put down your five times number. When I first started teaching this last summer, I called it three years to being financially independent, three years to being work optional, meaning I love real estate. So I'm going to keep working with buyers and sellers, but I don't have to, right? Because I'm making more money from passive income streams than I am from my active closing commissions. Wouldn't that be, op uh, be awesome? And we, not be, we may not be able to spend a million dollars a year. If I made a million dollars a year, I would not spend it all. <laughs> My wife couldn't spend a million dollars a year, but could I fund some pretty cool causes with a million dollars a year? I already have the causes picked out, right? And I would love to be able to donate more generously than I do. Would I love to pay off my son's house? Got a wife and three kids. He's a tech sergeant in the Air Force. The sole income for a family of five plus a big dog. Mm -hmm. How cool would that be to pay his house off? So I don't need all this money for my and my wife's personal needs, but I could think of a lot of fun ways to spend a lot of money. And everyone in this room has that opportunity to generate that kind of revenue. Okay. If you put a name at the top, in other words, you have a Jackson Henry mortgage loan officer partner right now. I would, <laughs> you going to interview? <laughs> I would encourage you to meet with them and review this. <laughs> Specifically, talk about other realtors you can introduce to them and even events that you may want to co-host to meet them in large groups. Okay. If you do not have a Jackson Henry LO selected, can our LOs just raise their hand? Right. Brittany, Lana, Shannon, Trevor. I would encourage you to talk to them. By the way, you can find all of them on our, our website, all their contact info or grab a card while you're here uh, and interview them. You're never locked in to a particular loan officer. So if you get, begin working with one, it's just not a great match. They're all great people. They're all very competent, but sometimes it's just a personal issue, not a great match, not my working style, not my communication style. Then you're welcome to select another. You're not locked in. Fortunately, now that we have 23 in the Houston metro area, you've got lots of choices. But I only invited our top four here today. <laughs> not really. I invited them all, but you see who showed up, right? These, these LOs are all very sharp, all very motivated, 
and they came here specifically uh, to support you and your aspirations of growing a significant stream of passive income. Okay, any final questions from you? Okay, thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mindy, let's connect over those names. Yeah, I'll, I'll check my phone. Trevor, I wanted to see the department. Yeah. 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 Yeah.